All right, found one here. So you got a fairly large chunk of quartz here. That's like a gray, grayish clear color quartz. Uh, pocket, little patch of pegmatite. It's like right here, sort of an oblong shape. Sort of a oblong shape here, so runs all across there. And we got the feldspar right here, the pink feldspar. All there. There's a little sheet of mica right here. There's a few other sheets of mica right here. Is one of those metallic oxides. I have identified another place as ilmenite. That's what I'm leaning towards at least. And then even some little thingy to the pockets, I'm guessing. I don't know what these are. These could be just where other minerals have eroded out too, so. And then the metallic oxides are definitely associated with this stuff though. There's a little vein of quartz running up through here. Another one right here in that feldspar which is all over here. This bottom part and most of this is quartz right here. So and this is all hosted in this uh, schist rock here. Schist, nice, probably grading one to the other. Yeah. Get more of this pegmatite here. So, of course, most of Raven Rock composed of a very um, schistose material here. But as we come down here, this appears to be what is a sill of granitic magma. Uh, it's a granitic pegmatite here that's been emplaced. We have a feldspar, I think, right over here. Uh, another one of those little, let me zoom in a little here, one of those little oxides right there. Again, I think it's ilmenite. More feldspar here. Big chunk of quartz here. And more feldspar right in here. Another quartz, so kind of just an alternating pattern between feldspar and quartz. Super cool. So this is a little tough to see, um, but it picks actually back up right here. Uh, so we were just over there by that ledge, there's Fang. So there by that ledge, you follow this. And we have a few feet of shift, give or take, above or below. Let me pick up back with this pegmatite here. Uh, so it just runs again, sill, because it runs concordant to the foliation of the schist. So you can see right here, it runs in the same direction as the schist, right? And we have these quartz pieces here. I'm not seeing at, oh, there's a little bit of feldspar right there. And it continues. So it's over there, and it continues over here. You can see more quartz over there, and I think it continues in that little pocket that we're gonna go take a look. If I can make sure I don't hurt myself while doing this. All right, inside there, yeah, big old pocket of, uh, I think that's feldspar in there. Yeah, so. There's a pretty solid exposure of it in there. Neat. And then a closer look at that right there. That's a lot of moss in there in that little cavern. All right. Hey, you see all that feldspar there? That's uh, some orange feldspar not too far from here. There is some granite. There's a granite quarry, a white granite quarry with some pink feldspar. I'm wondering if these the two are related. Uh, that's kind of a tricky question to answer, but you can see some foliation there in the, I actually haven't determined what this material is here. It may be that it's just, uh, uh, maybe some of the schist. All this is running concordant in the same direction as the schist, so. It's this sill here that we were we were just over there, all right, and picks back up actually right up there, 
I don't know if you can see it very well. All right, there's a bit of a texture change there. It continues up through kind of the upper part of this formation here. I don't know where it actually picks up exactly. So in all my brilliance, I mean, the entrance is like right there, right? And I walked all the way down there looking for the pegmatites and turns out there is a nice fat sill of the pegmatites running all up and down under here. It runs all the way from over there up to kind of where I'm standing and it's a cluster of veins again all running kind of in formation or in the same direction as the schist is flowing. It just kind of bulges it a little in some places. It doesn't cross cut it in any way shape or form. Yeah. Come over here, right? I think I cited a bit of ilmenite or some other mystery metal oxide. I probably need to stop using the term ilmenite until I get that confirmed in some way, shape, or form. But you can see these metal oxides here. There's more of them. And they kind of seem to prefer areas kind of where the schist is close to. So they seem to want to hug the schist. And then there's another harder to see vein down there running. It's a bit harder to see, right? Come all the way over here. These clusterings down here and up in here, and there's some quartz there. Come all the way over here. And it's kind of working its way onto the roof now. I think this is probably the largest exposure I've seen right in here. I'll get my hand over so you see so you can see it, right? It's a pretty big exposure right in here. Again, characteristically pegmatite, you have these large quartz crystals and these very large feldspar crystals. Um, and much like a pegmatite, you have interesting accessory minerals that are forming. There's one right there. In kind of the margins here, it seems that the pegmatite, it doesn't really like to form at the center. I haven't seen any, this is what I would consider the center. I haven't seen a whole lot of that black metallic oxide that I've been calling il ilmenite. And I believe to be il ilmenite, but I gotta confirm that a little. Um, one interesting thing here, right, is that this is the only place that I've seen it, right, where the pegmatite, I'm thinking, still it's the pegmatite and maybe just a quartz vein, but it seems like it's still the pegmatite, is running disconcord into the foliation. So it's cross-cutting. It's cutting through the host rock, not running alongside the host rock. So this is the only area I've seen so far today where it's running against the fabric of the rock. Um, and like I said, majority of these do run with the fabric of the rock and seeing little more of those metallic oxide and uh, that actually takes off up high and underneath that more of the schist although you'll see little bodies and pockets of it like right there right there so and then over here there's a little more that's a thicker vein there. Uh, yeah, super cool stuff. Oh, you're looking at it from above. Right all by the Cape Fear River. Anything, watch it. So all throughout the trail, you will see, uh, coming up to the rock, you will see these uh, lines here of quartz, kind of rubbly. Uh, quartz. Just placed throughout the trail, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that these are um, remnants of the pegmatites. So my first clue there, as you can see that pattern there, almost looks like there might have at one point been contacts between this rock and a uh, schisty metamorphic rock, which would match our description. 
of our rock, post rock there. All right, so you see that occasionally, this pattern here. Um, I see weathered pockets where there might have been other minerals. Uh, and since they're all rubbly, that would indicate that there was probably something holding this together at one point, and that might have been, like you can imagine, a large chunk of feldspar from earlier, right here. 